And joining me now in the studios is uh, Scott and uh, Trina, and uh, they are with uh, the Kudaway Financial Services here in the uh, Kudaway community, and it's a e-commerce consumer lender with a mission of developing a business that supports the Lakutaway community from providing funds for the tribal community to awarding scholarships for our tribal members. And uh, that's how they have the work. Glad to have both of you in the studio. Good morning. So tell us a little bit how all of this happens. Uh, maybe the business model a little bit, but then how does all of that come back to the tribal community? Oh, okay. And rough numbers, what does that equate to? I think this fiscal year we're going to uh, contribute about uh, $8.1 Wow. Oh, wow. Yes. That's, so just that's ex yeah, significant and substantial. So <clears throat> an agent, what does what that job description look like? It's basically uh, in a call center. Uh, it's a loan processor or a collector. So they're, they're actually engaged with the customers, with our okay. borrowers, uh, taking uh, loan applications or collecting on past due accounts. Okay. Yeah. And you have a couple of call centers, right? Locations, not just here in Hayward, right. but in another state? Yes, we have one in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, how did that happen? How did we get into St. Louis, Missouri? Well, as we were building the company, we knew that we had to grow. And there's yeah. only a, there's a limited workforce here in Hayward. So uh, a, as we were growing, you know, we were going to have a, have a real issue of, of being able to, to uh, service these accounts. Sure. So um, I am from St. Louis, so I have a lot of oh, contacts. Oh, okay. Uh, so it just made, it was just kind of a natural <clears> thing that, you know, hey, I can bring some people on at this call center. And, and that's how, it, how we started with that. It's actually... Um, enabled us to really grow. I think before we, we opened the St. Louis call center, we were probably only contributing three or four million uh, per, per year uh, yeah. to the tribe. Because of that expansion, that's what has allowed us to really oh, get these numbers up. Okay. So I was wondering where that St. Louis well, connection came from. Well, it helps our sustainability yeah. too in regards to, especially here we're limited, especially door to our seasons. So yeah. when things happen here, we always have coverage. Sure. Yeah. From both spots. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so how many how many seats do you have for these um, people, and then how many are empty? How many people do you need yet here in the Lacoudre area, particularly? Well, we're always hiring here. Yeah. So I think uh, right now we have about seventy five people. Yeah. Here. Wow. Um, okay. You know, I think in St. Louis we maybe have fifty. Okay. So, um, you know, we can add as many as we need in St. Louis. Here's where we have the difficulty because there's just the workforce is not as large. Sure. When you're looking at a metropolitan area in, in St. Louis of 3 million people. Yeah. So right. it's easy to add. <laughs> but, you know, in, in the last few months or I would say last six months, we've decided that instead of adding a lot of people in St. Louis, we're kind of automating our process. So okay. we're having more AI built into the process that eliminates some of the positions. Okay. Yeah. It creates some new ones, but sure. it eliminates a lot of the, right. uh, the agent positions. Right. There. 
And I know you do a lot with um, employee retention, employee um, training, and uh, business management sort of things. Talk a little bit about that and how employees are enriched in their skill sets. Okay. Well, I think one of the, I mean, one of the things I love is the growth from everybody, you know, coming in. Some of them are a little nervous when they come in with zero skill sets and then they learn all of these transferable set yeah, you know, skills right. that they can take those anywhere that they go. Yep. Um, and our goal is basically <clears throat> the more we empower our employees to build upon themselves and build their skills, the more they're going to retain, we're going to retain them. You know, I mean, who people love coming to work when there's incentives and when there's bonuses and, right. and as well as just being treated fairly and kind, you yeah. know, we provide a great atmosphere that I have to say that we have a pretty good work culture, you know, in regards to keeping people happy on both sites, whether it be right. in St. Louis or whether it be in Hayward, we're still one team, Sure, but it, it's in regards to, they enjoy coming to work. They right. enjoy doing their job. And so we just continue to, you know, play off of that. Right. Yeah. And I've, I've noticed that the, the limited times I've been in the office, it's the atmosphere is, is just awesome. I love it. And I don't know how much of that comes from you, Trina, or the people <laughs> that you have brought into the organization to help support that team. It's amazing. I just love it there. And you talked about some of these transferable skills. So, so what name a few of those or what they might be like for um, a person coming in, they're going to learn some of these transferable skills. Well, some of them, I think, are just your simple and basic, like, you know, being able to answer a phone, being able to provide good customer service, being able to train on what good customer service is. Right. You know, I yeah. mean, the when you answer a phone and when you're doing the job, you are you have, you know, a headset on, you're working with multiple systems. So you're learning how to navigate the software <clears throat> within the systems. And those that, that doesn't come easy for a lot of people. Sure. You know, logging onto a computer is just your, you know, sometimes a step forward for a lot but when they come in and don't have any of those skills and then they're learning all those right and then even just your communication when you do speak with the customers you know whether it is providing a loan you're helping them in guiding them in you know the direction of what to do in the next steps collection is literally working your communication skills in regards to understanding whatever the problem may be with a consumer and then just being able to listen and offer help and support because that's yeah. our job as the collector right. is let's let where we, where can we help you at mm -hmm. what can we do mm -hmm. and i think uh showing up on time to work <laughs> that's very it's, important it's a learned skill and uh, a lot of kids in this day and age really don't have that work ethic if you will um you know the older communities have that from when they grew up, but uh, that's kind of Absolutely. missing from, from these kids nowadays. And we offer, you know, one of the good things about that and trying to build that work ethic yeah. is we offer a perfect attendance award every month. And we got some pretty nice awards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we get monthly, what, the first prize is a thousand. Second prize is something in regards to, a, say, a five, six hundred dollar item. We try to, wow. you know, provide something that people we know will use. Right. Or we listen to the agents in the, in you know, in the offices and what they're talking about, you know, in regards to just ideas and stuff. Sure. But I mean, every month you just perfect attendance, coming to work, coming on time, mm -hmm. not leaving early. That is we're just trying to build that. And Basic. there's a lot of there's a lot of employees before it was a low number, like a hand or two handfuls. Now we're getting like 20s yeah. and 30s. And yeah, we're getting a nice amount of people that are and, always eligible. And the amount of bonus that we provide. So it, it, it makes somebody want to come to work because the longer wow. you're there, the bigger the bonus. And there's bonuses on a monthly basis of four to five thousand. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's that's that's pretty wow. substantial. Yeah. And just the personal life skills, just right. learning simple everyday life skills that they probably didn't learn. And, and a lot of these people, I don't know if this is their first job or their second job, but they probably learned some poor skills in their previous appointment. And now you're able to offer them these types of skills. That's, yeah. that's really critical. Mm -hmm. And then advancement in the company, how does that work? And how, how, how has that been happening? Has that been pretty good? It's been, it's been fantastic. I mean, advancement is just like any other company. When you prove your worth and, and you can show that you have mastered the skills, you, you are eligible for advancement. And we have, uh, 
I mean, there's, you know, Matt Rydell, Amber Rydell, Adele uh, White, Adele White uh, Cameron Porter. I mean, these people have all risen to really heights that you would not have expected. Yeah. And it's because they've worked hard and, and have done well. Um, you know, we, we love to see people perform much higher than they thought they could. Sure. And, and that is really one of the true, true joys of this. Yeah. Um, and you get some junior executives out of this. And like you said, it's transferable skills. So if they say, hey, I need to move on in my career path, and, and that's really an open door for them to say, I can do this and I can Absolutely. go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we all lose good employees that way, but we're bettering the community in a, in a bigger way, bigger picture way mm -hmm. than just yes. saying, no, we want to keep these people for ourselves. We you know um, I've worked with Dave Anderson and he's had very similar uh, success in uh, running his uh, barbecue business. And he always wanted to advance his employees, make sure that they were comfortable, happy, com happy coming to work. Mm -hmm. My goodness, that's a big, it a is. big deal. So, uh, kudos to you guys and what you're doing there. Talk about some of the other um, things that you're happening with the community as far as um, being able to support uh, scholarships or uh, donate to other entities. Yeah, I mean we are, uh, you know, we're we're very uh, active, especially with scholarships, and you know we don't really uh, make the degree relate to uh, the work that they do as long as they're getting a higher education. Uh, we support that and it may be in something that you know could be in sports marketing and we know that they're not going to use that working with us but we know that that's going to make them a better person yeah and they may leave us and right. if they do we're, we're happy for them um, we just want the community to end up better off than it was before we got there mm -hmm. yeah um and expansion, you were mentioning here some of the goals for like, expanding this business model. How is how is that going to happen? Well, I mean, you know, we're involved in a lot of, I mean, we're highly technical, first of all. <laughs> it's, you know, we, our technology is, it, it's really quite amazing. We, we had a meeting just yesterday with a bank and, and we, we kind of chuckled a little bit because our technology at the bank is years behind us <laughs> and sure it's just we're, we're on the forefront so we are always developing new things we're developing you know automated processes that we at some point we will uh we will commercially uh market to other tribes and other lenders. oh okay yes yeah, so we are in the in in that process right now um it, it takes a while to do these things probably you know 12 months to 18 months but at the end of that time will be more of a technology firm probably oh. uh, than we are now. Okay. Yes. And then you'll be acting as consultants then for other tribes to do this sort of thing or? Well, it's it's not necessarily a consultant. It could be, yeah. um, but we will have a service for them. Uh, it, it's kind of that uh, SaaS uh, area, uh, you know, software as a service. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we develop it here in house develop. for the tribe, and then we provide the service okay. sales to the other tribes to utilize it. Okay. The software to, yes. to run sure. their, their operations. Okay, so you're developing some very specific software to your industry yes. right here. Proprietary yes. to us, yes. Wow, very cool. Now, um, here in uh, at WOJB, we're just you know a couple blocks down the road from you, or country blocks down the road. And our internet isn't very um, trustworthy. So how do you deal with that as a technology company and you're dependent on that technology and phones? Yes. Uh, how do you, you know, work with that well, sort we of thing? Use, we have fiber optic okay. uh, internet. So, and everything is based off that. We don't use any landline phones or um, we can't rely on cell tower yeah. here, but it's all fiber optic. Okay. And then there's, there's, you know, we have redundancies. Uh, and again, that's part of the St. Louis thing too, is that if something would happen oh, here, we sure. have a redundancy there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would automatically flow everything over right. that direction mm -hmm. exactly. or vice versa. If they had a uh, storm down there and they got shut down and it, which has happened several times mm -hmm. wow. both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. Um, what was the other question here? Trina, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Leadership. Okay, team update. What's happening there? Um, I think we kind of shared that a little bit, oh. just about building our team, building oh, our employees okay. and stuff I like that. I thought there might have been more of a corporate director level sort of uh, changes happening. I mean, we've had some changes on our executive level, but I think for the most part, we got a pretty strong team on all levels in regards to delivering information. We've added some more people um, in regards to like underwriting. Um, okay. So we're s specializing in the different areas. And so mm -hmm. everyone's coming in going to learn their, their own skills. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how does someone uh, start with your company? What, what can they do? And obviously yeah. they apply for a job, but how do they get to that? Is it on the website or they got to come in? It is definitely on the website. Um, they can uh, call HR uh, and uh, you know, schedule an interview. I mean, anybody that calls, we're going to give them an interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And the chances of them getting employed are probably pretty good because you yeah. have some empty seats there. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, now, how long has this been operating? Well, we started the in the industry in 2014. Okay. Um, and then we had our growth from our old location to our new location now in 2019. And then Scott joined us in 20. But since he's grown, I think that's where our real growth came from, or since he came on, our real growth came on since sure. it's been aboard. Yeah. And that has been since 20. We've probably quadrupled what we were from employees as well as to revenue. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think that St. Louis factor had a, a well, me added, measurable element to it. Yeah, it did. And when I first arrived, most of the, uh, of the work was being done by a servicer, an outside service. Okay. That, uh, we have since uh parted ways and that we've taken over all of it yeah wow and that's where the real growth has come from mm -hmm. yeah because you're in charge of it you yes. control mm -hmm. especially i'm assuming the other servicer probably didn't have the good employee relationships going on and an encouragement and, and things like that so Absolutely. you're yeah. in total control of that Wow. Well, and you know, and I, I just want to reflect back on the leadership when we talk about when since Scott's came on. I mean, I mean, I applaud Scott in so many different areas because that really is true leadership. He helps not just build people, but he allows people to build upon themselves and then helps them along the way, giving them guidance and support. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of people can go into a lot of place of employment and feel bad about making mistakes. And one of the things mistakes you know, sometimes we're not in a room for a lot of big mistakes, but little mistakes to help build skills, they're going to happen. And right. he yeah. definitely comes from a direction of, okay, just fix it. Don't do it again. Let's work on it and fix it and don't do it again. So it really brings a lot of people at ease, I think, um, as co-workers and stuff that I see. But right. his ability to stay innovative, his mindset is just that's amazing to have leadership in that area because that's how we just continue to grow and stay with the times mm -hmm. of being advanced. Sure. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's fun always learning some new things. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. No, you can never stop learning. I've always told people that. Yeah. And uh, speaking of never stopping learning, do you get any um, older applicants and, and people working in the call centers? We do. Yeah, we do. We definitely yeah. have a diverse of your young ones, your new ones coming up, and some yeah. older ones that maybe are at retirement or retired and they enjoy wanting more of a sit down office type job versus standing up on their feet. And yeah, we find we find their strengths and use them to their strengths. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, any advantages to maybe at our at the LCO University of a, a business student that uh, wants to learn more about how the business operations happen is this a better position for them than somebody who maybe just graduated out of high school and isn't really sure where they're going what kind of uh, employees are you looking for or candidates for employment um, are you looking for the business leaders already from the university or is this more you know 18 year olds straight out of high school i think it can be both um you know, when you have your business students out of college, you know, they've been taught theory. You know, they yeah. come over, they're going to see it, what the real world, <clears throat> real corporate uh, situation is like. And I think they can excel then. 
Um, but you know, if you're right out of high school as well, you can still learn those skills. You don't yeah. necessarily have to go to college. You just won't be as further along. Sure. So your depth of knowledge is a little less. And I can understand that theory versus reality. Um, that could be, you know, a reprogramming, if you will, for some business students versus someone, you know, straight out of high school or who never went to college doesn't have that background of theory where they could have a different idea of what business is and how it's really run. And, and, it, and again, it, what it, you know, the college uh, graduate would have a little bit of an advantage just because they teach you more critical thinking. So okay. when there is a problem, they kind of teach you how to solve it. Oh, yes. Okay. So where when you come out of high school, you don't necessarily have that. You don't skills. have that, right? Yeah, it's too young. And I'm assuming you're hiring 18 and older? Yes. Okay, yes. yeah. And um, that's great. Yeah. Well, I don't know what else there is unless you have something else to spring upon us, some new ventures or new new scholarships. No, I think we shared our, our exciting <laughs> things coming up. Yeah. I, I will say that, you know, we offer scholarships as many as want who yeah. supply. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think when I first got there, they were only giving two a year. Yeah. We will, I'll give 50. Yeah. I, I mean, if it's going to make people better, it's going to make us better. In the long and this is a, a scholarship bonus for your employees. Yeah. It's an right. internal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and not only. Do so they, if they want to go to the university and start off while they're being employed with you yes. guys, you have scholarships available. And they for also that. get eight hours of paid time off. Okay. Go to class. Oh, okay. Per week. Yeah. yeah. So we'll per work with week. them yes. on their schedules oh. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Because you know sometimes That's they have a... classes when they have to be at work. Yeah. So they they're able to go get out of work, get paid for it, go to class, and then come back. Sure. Yeah. So and another question, maybe looking at COVID, how did you guys handle COVID, and in, in your call centers and stuff? Did people go home and do their work from there, or? They we, stayed at work and just did the spacing. We had some uh, remote uh, agents, but for the most part, we just spread everybody out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was one of these uh, industries where it's critical. So we couldn't, you know, just leave all of our, our borrowers on their own because they were calling and needing help. Sure. So if we didn't have the people there, so they yeah. had to, we still had to work. But it, it was challenging. Yeah. It was very challenging. And I'm assuming with the computer systems that you were using and the data that you had, you couldn't have someone working from their home computer at home. They had to be working on your secured system and they servers. They, yeah, yeah, they would sign into our system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a remote VPN. I don't know if people really understand how much is sitting behind the trees up on the hill in that, in yeah. that building. It's, it's, busy bees. it's quite the facility and, and quite the operation. So, well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing what's happening there. I hope we can get you some more applicants based on this information. So if uh, you are looking for something to learn and uh, do, contact the LCO Financial Services HR department, what's the number? 715-254-8901. All right. Very cool. Well, thank you folks for coming it's in. Well, we appreciate it much. Us. Yeah. All right. Take care. Have a good day. You too. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Marge. Over and, and uh, take a tour. Yeah, I'd like to do that again. I hear there's a game room there too. Game room. Wasn't no. there a game room in the when I when you walked in right through the front door back in the break room? I thought there was. Oh yeah, there was. Well, table or something back there. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this was back during the open house. Oh, yeah, yeah, I came okay, into there yeah. and took the tour of the place, but I know. Talked about it too. Yeah. yeah, or some sort of that weight room or athletic yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Yeah, we have a hot dog. Oh, machine. and popcorn? No popcorn. Oh, 